So what does somebody actually need to acquire a gun in this country? Um, if they're going to go start on something like an air rifle, all you need is two forms of ID. Uh, so, so I could actually come in and grab one of those now with my passport and driver's license? Yeah. The firearms legislation is in such an unsatisfactory state that it really requires a complete overhaul, a new code where we could look at all of the material, including licensing, and we could produce a more coherent pattern of criminal legislation. Do you think people realise how many guns there are in this no, country? No, I don't think they do, um, which is probably a good thing. Most people don't even realise the neighbours have got a shotgun. For many of us in this country, guns aren't really a part of life. And unless you live in the countryside or regularly go clay pigeon shooting, you'd be forgiven for not really knowing much about legal guns at all. So are guns legal in this country, yes or no? Well, I don't know. I, I, could, I could say yes or no. I don't know if it's, uh, they're legal or not. Do you know anybody with a gun? I don't know anybody with a gun. I know people that have been shot. Legal? Legal. Owned. People own guns legally in this country. In fact, there are over 1.8 million legal guns in this country and over 700,000 gun license holders. Last year saw the largest number of legal firearms in the UK since statistics were first collected in 1995. The measures we have around guns are very strict, some of the strictest in the world. And gun deaths are rare here, the majority of those being down to illegal guns. To some though, like the Law Commission, an independent body established by Parliament, our laws are inadequate and need immediate reform. Under the present law, it's clear that there are criminals who are exploiting these loopholes and putting public safety at risk. Legal gun owners, though, say our laws don't need to change. In fact, many think we should have more relaxed laws. They say criminals don't follow gun laws anyway, so stricter laws don't affect them. They tell me that they feel they're too often used as a scapegoat for anything bad that happens in relation to firearms, and that they're not properly given the chance to tell their side of the story. So, I'm on my way to meet some. Hey, Callum. Hi, Ben. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. I like your ride. Thank you. It's very nice. <laughs> Is the um, shop down here? Yeah, just down this road. Is it your typical gun shop? I would say so. First, I was meeting a man called Callum to buy some ammunition at a local gun shop. This is the gun shop. Morning. 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 All right. Hello. Wow. Yeah. So these so. are guns. Yeah. Callum owns seven guns. And he's got a YouTube channel called English Shooting. On it, he talks about everything gun related and campaigns for more access to guns in the UK. Right, could I have a uh, hundred Ely Force, please? Uh, of course you can. Got your club idea on you? Yeah. So how does it work for you and from your perspective? Can you reject somebody if you feel as if they're not suitable for a gun? Yes, we can. Um, the police give us our licence and then it's down to our judgement as to whether we serve people. How would you assess me if I came to the counter and had my pass, I mean my licence, what would you do to kind of is it just just ask me a couple of questions. Yeah, if you were stood there shaking, agitated, sweating, I'd probably figure something was wrong. I'd probably offer you a cup of tea and find, try and figure out what was actually up. It's such a big responsibility. It's like being like simultaneously a sales assistant or manager, because you're a manager, yeah. and a counsellor at the same time. Um, or like a psychiatrist or something. It's, it's quite a big thing, you know, even sort of the, the lowliest sales guy in a gun shop has, has that pressure on them. They can go to prison and get fines for making simple simple mistakes, um, but they have quite big consequences, obviously. See, this this looks like a, I mean, this is a proper machine, though. Mm. This looks like it could do some damage. Oh, yeah, um, I'll blow a decent size hole in my box. I'm not in the world of, of guns. I don't, don't really know anybody with guns. You obviously have had, like, a different upbringing. Mm. So what is your background? Um, my, my father was a farmer, so I was sort of brought up around the countryside. I know he used to have guns. When was the first time you held a gun? Probably about 12, 13 years old, something like that, in reality. This one looks like it's pretty much the same size as me. Let's see this. Before we go any further, it's worth looking at what guns people can legally own in this country. To start, everything in that room could have legally been owned by someone with the right reasons to do so. Gun laws differ slightly in different parts of the UK. Northern Ireland, for example, is the only place you can legally own a gun for personal protection and own a handgun. This isn't possible in the rest of the country. If you want to own a gun, your main options are a shotgun or a rifle. And for this, you'll need a shotgun or firearm license respectively. 
To acquire one, police must be satisfied you're not dangerous and have good reason to get a gun. Just wanting a gun isn't good reason. Things like sports shooting and pest control count. You are permitted to keep your guns at home. You'll just need to provide safe storage space. Most other firearms are prohibited. Handguns and most semi-automatic rifles are banned, for example. These controls were introduced after two major gun incidents. Dunblane in 1996 and the Hungerford Massacre in 1987. Back in the shop, Callum had brought some guns to show me. Like many gun owners, Callum keeps all his guns in a safe at home. He didn't want to show me them there though, as he thought it'd send out the wrong message. And worry his neighbours. The majority of people, if they saw this, would be like, whoa. That's yeah. kind of scary. Would you? And that's because, um, especially within the UK, you only ever really see this being used, say, by the police or in, say, Call of Duty. Yeah, it is, looks exactly like a sniper yeah. rifle. Is it strange a bit being a gun owner in the UK? Because obviously, I mean, you can go onto the internet and see the, I suppose, freedom American gun owners have. Yeah, it's, it's incredibly frustrating because I have absolutely no intention ever of using a gun in a bad way. I enjoy the sport of shooting. What people jump to is that I own guns for the illicit reason. And it's frustrating for me that you tell somebody that you own a gun and you're instantly a weirdo. For me, there has been no evidence to show that banning a particular type of gun has any you know, form of uh, prevention. You know, a semi-automatic rifle doesn't change the mentality of the person. If it I... changes the amount of bullets that can be shot from the gun, which could make it deadlier. But it doesn't matter how capable the gun is of storing ammunition. It's, it's about the person behind it. So these are the guns that you kind of see on TV? Yeah, um, the handgun is uh, you know, it's something that everyone's aware of. It's interesting that as we don't call 911, we use handguns. Yeah. And that's something you ascribe to? Uh, no, it's a, from a different culture. Being British and being a, a firearms owner, it almost feels illegal to have any sort of opinion on using guns for self-defense because that's just not what the culture is here. Criminals are, I think, laughing at us at the moment. They know that a lot of people are, are scared to do anything um, you know, offensive in their home because of the repercussions. You know, many people have ended up in jail because they've only marginally overstepped the mark. Callum told me owning a gun was like being in a secret society in the UK. He seemed worried to speak his mind due to the reaction he might get from the public. The last real conversation we had around licensed guns in this country was following the Cumbria massacre in 2010, where Derek Baird killed 12 people with a licensed rifle. Many gun owners say the media's focus on events like these, though, demonizes legitimate gun owners, despite them being such rare occurrences. Gun conversations in this country are usually centered around those in the US, not really here in the UK. And that's because America's relationship with guns is a lot more serious. For example, in the UK in 2014, there were 24 homicide gun deaths for the whole year. In the US, on Christmas Day alone last year, there were 27 deaths. As with the extremely well-known NRA in the United States, Britain also has its own version of the NRA. It's just not quite as big or not really the same thing as its American counterpart. It is 12 years older though. They've even got handguns. Yeah, this one's from 1894, but these are now illegal. Obviously there's the infamous American NRA, is this similar to that? I, I'm not terribly familiar with them, to be honest. You know, they, they have you know, a, a big political lobbying, you know, and again, I think they've been very successful in what they do. We're all about sporting shooting. I think there are areas of common interest. I think a large part of theirs is obviously the, the, the constitutional right to own a weapon, mm. and also using weapons for self-defence. Is that something that you would like to see in this country? Well, you know, I have no issue in terms of you know, self-defence. It's not part of our remit. People in this country cannot own rifles or, or, or shotguns or any firearm actually for self-defence. That's not what they're used for. They're purely sporting vehicles. Are you purposely missing? <laughs> no, no, are you? <laughs> I'm not even no, joking, because you hit the same place each time. Yeah, right? no, I cheated, I put shot five at the centre about 10 minutes ago when you were in the loo. The NRA has over 28,000 members, and say they perform checks on each of them prior to them joining. As it's a Home Office approved club, being a member also counts as good reason when applying for a licence. 
So, if I wanted to get a gun, this is one option of where to begin. With an instructor like Miles. How, yeah. how would you stop, say I was like a complete psychopath? Yeah. Who had the ability to muffle my social skills to make it seem like I was completely fine and had no issues. <laughs> how do you kind of prevent for that? It's, that's the sort of, a, that's the awful part of it. Uh, you use your gut. We're discussing our uh, uh, probationers who are, who, are, who are learning how to shoot with us. Uh, but we're also talking to the police. Now, because of the Data Protection Act, obviously they can't turn around and go, ah, run away, run away. You don't want to have anything to do with this person. They'll give us a sort of a, a hint that maybe things aren't quite right. But as you say, it's like anything. You, uh, you can't legislate for somebody waking up one morning and going tonto. Right, Benjamin, shotgun is a very basic thing. Whilst at the NRA grounds, I was given the opportunity to handle a shotgun for the first time. Use the safety catches. We don't rely on that. It's safe when it's open. There you go, you got him. Very good, put the gun down. That was a lot more powerful than I expected. Actually. Really? Yeah. <laughs> like that. <laughs> do you do much TV stuff? Uh, no. My time spent with the UK's gun owners was an interesting one. I found that in this mostly male world, there's also an increasing female presence. You, you run an all-female yeah. gun club. How yeah. did that happen? So um, I'm really into shooting, and when I learned to shoot, it's just a load of old boys. And while they were like really good to me and like really supportive and helpful, I just thought that there's, there's just no women, and we're all missing a trick here. And wouldn't it be amazing for shooting to be more accessible than it's ever been? We teach women to shoot, and then we all eat cake afterwards. I found there are definitely concerns around firearm laws in the UK. Reforms proposed by the Law Commission were included in February into a policing and crime bill sponsored by Theresa May. We made recommendations to close various loopholes in the existing law in relation to some fundamental failings, a lack of definition of whether something is a lethal barrelled weapon, whether something is an antique firearm so that it falls within the exemption, whether something is a readily convertible imitation firearm. So those are recommendations we made that have been taken forward. Their report did not touch on licensing, and the Law Commission see that as the next step. We suggest that the time is ripe for a full codification exercise where we look at every element of firearms legislation, licensing and all of the uh, prohibited weapons and we produce a more coherent scheme in one single statute rather than have them spread across 34 different statutes and that will allow us also to look at the efficiency of and the effectiveness of the licensing regimes. An organisation that assesses the work of the police has also highlighted issues with licensing suggesting problems like people being allowed to hold onto their firearms after their license has expired, due to inadequate enforcement. To end this, the government are going to update laws around guns, but for those wanting rules to be relaxed, they may be disappointed, as it seems there might be more restrictions as opposed to less in the future.